Eternal Evil is one of those games that has a lot of issues, but also has a significant amount of heart in it. Would you believe me if I told you that this game was primarily made by one person? What? Vladimir Zlobin is a single developer under Honor Games and is a 3D artist in Kazakhstan. It's not a stretch to say that he created something special here. Eternal Evil is an early access spiritual return to the younger days of Resident Evil, when slow horror, heavy puzzle solving, and scarce resources were the driving force behind gameplay. Despite the bulk of this game being created by a single individual, there is surprising depth in the world, exploration, and gameplay. It took me 10 hours to complete the campaign, and to my surprise, there was quite a bit of environmental variety present. Throughout the story, players will progress through hotels, police stations, and small towns just to name a few. Each location is accompanied by its own set of puzzles for the player to undertake. Much like its inspiration, Eternal Evil rewards players for exploring its many locales. These rewards can vary from more inventory space, weapon upgrades, and ammo. Exploration will also lead to the discovery of puzzle pieces. This game requires a certain level of dedication from the player by scouring documents throughout the world for players to read. While reading these can offer more insight into the characters, their motives, and the events that led to the game's current situation, reading these is also a necessity for solving puzzles. Though I found a few of the puzzles fun and engaging without having to read anything, there were certainly some that I was stuck on for a half hour at a time or more just because I missed a single sentence in a four page book. The game does offer skippable tokens in the form of little silver skulls that are a one time consumable, so there's that. These tokens do not outnumber the number of puzzles though, so players will have to engage in some. Though the game offers these tokens, I was baffled when I went to use one and it told me that I had to actually go and discover every piece of the puzzle before I could skip it. The main reason I wanted to skip the puzzle was because I couldn't find the pieces. If you're a fan of puzzles, I think you'll enjoy this because some of them are truly head scratching, like having to learn how actual chess works to complete one. Now, the narrative follows two characters, Hank and Marcus. They are former partners in the police force that went their separate ways when they disagreed on the morality of a case they were involved in. You can choose which campaign to start with, Hank's revolves around the hotel and Marcus journeys through the rest. Both play into the main story by trying to solve a murder that is linked to the apocalypse as they try to uncover a sinister vampiric plot. How this narrative is written and unfolds leaves a lot to be desired. It's not a stretch for me to say that I really didn't give two licks about the story or the characters it follows. I appreciate the effort put forth by the single dev, but it's kind of a flat ride with perhaps some of the worst voice acting I have ever heard. This game does have cutscenes in the form of comic book pages, and I did somewhat enjoy that, just because you never see anything like that these days, even if it was used here due to budget restraints. Now, I've always found Resident Evil's voice acting a bit B-movie quality at best, Though it isn't the greatest, it had some campy charm, however here it really did nothing for me. It made me laugh a few times, I mean, here, just listen to this. He knows I'm still not over what he did during that mission. So he wouldn't have called me if it wasn't really serious. What the hell is even that? Thankfully though, you can skip every cutscene if you're like me and are itching to get back to the real star, the gameplay. Like I previously mentioned, exploration is the big part of the game, and you can't go anywhere without running into the many denizens that stalk these environments. The opposition includes common ghouls, giant insects, and higher level vampires, and even more. Though they're visually diverse, their attack patterns are almost identical outside of one or two. They'll quickly close the gap, either grab you or swipe at you dealing damage. To deal with these, you'll have an assortment of guns from pistols to grenade launchers. The shooting feels hefty and polished with kick to all the guns. Sound design for each gun is pretty punchy. Because it's survival horror, you'll be relying on your trusty knife to reserve ammo. Trust me, you'll need it because the bosses in this game are massive bullet sponges and they deal crazy amounts of damage. The knife is a little jarring to use just because the hitboxes seem to be all over the place. It doesn't quite connect sometimes and it caused me several deaths. This game went for an immersion experience, hence the lack of HUD elements on screen. 
A cool feature is actually the ability to check your ammo by playing a little animation where your guy actually checks the rounds in the gun without having to open the menus to see. I really, really enjoyed that. The first four slots in your inventory are hotkeyed to the first four numbers. You can put anything in these, including consumables, and it's one button press away. For an extremely indie game, the graphics are actually quite impressive. It by no means looks like a modern title, but it also doesn't look too far behind. There is notable detail in the environments like streaks on the floors, particle effects, spent shell casings, stay on the floor, and dead enemies actually decompose over time. This is detail that even some AAA games miss. The dev clearly really cared about this project and put everything he could into it. Performance wise, it actually ran really great. I never had any noticeable dropped frames, crashes, or visual glitches. There was a lot of clipping, but that's kind of about it. There are a multitude of graphic settings for people to customize it the way they want. I ran it at medium settings, though I could have run it at max everything. Now I played it at 60 FPS, but there is also an option for 120 as well. Believe it or not, there's also controller support. That's crazy. There's controller support for both Sony and Xbox controllers. I tested this out on my Xbox controller and it actually worked pretty well. Buttons can't be mapped and the pre-mapped configuration is a little weird. Aiming felt a tad bit clunky for me, but it's there for people who want it. Alright, I've talked a lot about what I've liked, but there are several issues that can't be overlooked. Nothing game breaking, but it's important to mention them here. First, I'll start with the enemy placement and sound design. There aren't many audio cues for some of the tougher enemies, and I was caught off guard by leaving a room only to be faced with something that could not only close the gap extremely quickly, but also to hit me without me having any time to react. The game does this quite a bit by just throwing tougher enemies at you out of nowhere. Audio cues would help tremendously. Second is the AI pathing. I'm not ashamed to admit that I killed a lot of the heavier enemies enemies by just cheesing the game's horrible AI pathing. Enemies would get stuck in doorways, on staircases, run into walls, and occasionally just run away from me mid-fight. Some of the bigger enemies are fought in cramped spaces, making it easy to just run around obstacles and watch them get stuck on them. kind of feel like the ability to exploit the AI led to a lot of avoidable frustration though. Which leads me to my third negative, which is how enemies engage the player. Most of them can get up close and personal relatively quickly, and once they do, it's pretty hard to get away from them before they deal some serious damage to you. There will be occasions where you don't even have time to react before you die. One of the bosses has a lunge attack that also acts like a heat seeking rocket. This guy can literally change direction midair. Stopping them from closing the gap quickly wouldn't be as big of an issue if switching weapons was fast, but it's really slow and clunky here. I think this was done for the sake of tension and realism that the game is, seems to be going for, but sometimes it comes at the cost of a death, especially if the layout of the room is small. Now I have another issue with this game and it's a small gripe for me, but there is occasional nudity in this game. I'm not saying nudity in itself is bad, but it serves no purpose here other than having it because boobs I guess. It just felt totally unnecessary, but hey, I mean, if you're into that, I'm not gonna judge. Last but not least is the overly repeated boss encounters. There is nothing quite like fighting an identical boss six times throughout the game. I don't just mean identical as in looks, but attack patterns and voice lines. I get it, man. I'm a weak human, but can you fuck off already? Weak human. Weak. There isn't a lot of challenge to him either, just shoot him in the head till he passes out, only for him to show up an hour later and do the same exact thing. I started literally rolling my eyes every time he showed up. Hell, there's even achievements that you can unlock for fighting him and the achievements say, would you just die already? Like, the developer must have known that this was just gonna annoy the shit out of people. Eternal Evil is without a doubt a flawed experience, and how can it not be when it was primarily developed by one person? For that, I think it's fair to say that we should take the negatives with a grain of salt. Yes, this game can be incredibly frustrating at times, but I always wanted to return to it to see what else I had to offer and I was never disappointed. The game is regularly being updated with improvements and new content with more to come. The dev has stated that he is far from done with the title. He even sprinkled cash in the game that will allow players to unlock bonuses after the game leaves early access. Look, if you love the past days of survival horror gaming, I really can't give you a reason not to pick it up. Issues aside, it's incredibly fun and well worth the 23 Canadian asking price. If you think that that's asking too much, 
wait till it's on a sale, but I think the price is a steal for what you get here. I loved Resident Evil 8, but man, did it skip on the horror and the puzzles especially. If you missed it there, then you can certainly find it here. If this is something that interests you, please go show the dev some love because he certainly earned it. Eternal Evil is one hell of a ride. Thank you all for watching.